Uh, there is a fear of, of seeing the level of unlovingness within me. So, so third, third thing, we don't want to see our true condition. Or let's put it this way, I cannot, a feeling that I cannot face my true condition. I feel like especially still going through a lot of fear with after the sleep state talk. Yep. Um, to, to see the truth of what's happening there for me. Yes. Yep. Real struggle to feel our true condition. Yeah. So, so the trouble is when we struggle to feel our true condition, we bury our head in the sand, right? Because in denial, because we don't want to actually see or feel our true condition. Does that make sense? Money? It's just up the back there. Um, when I see the truth about myself, sometimes I feel so overwhelmed um, that it's so big that um, I feel powerless to change anything. Okay, so there are two issues there, really, but let's look at the first one. I feel overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by the badness. I, I guess I judge it as well. Right, see, I wouldn't call it the badness. I'd just call it the emotion within. <laughs> <laughs> you know, understand? I feel overwhelmed. Let's, we, we want to talk more about these feelings in a minute because we're going to focus on some of these feelings in the humility section of the talk. But can you see how some feelings are preventing us from even allowing the truth to open the door to love? We're not even getting to the point where we're opening the door to love because we're rigidly holding on to the door, which is truth, not wanting it to open because we're afraid of what we're going to have to feel if it opens. So we don't open it. Right? But we consign ourselves to stagnation. And then we punish ourselves for, we punish ourselves for being stagnant. Does all that make sense to you? Why would we bother that entire process? Why not stop that entire process and start acting differently? It's what we need to do, isn't it? If we go, Nora, thanks. Up to um, <clears throat> last night I felt um, very weak. Like I was really weak to be able to actually connect with God and allow the process Yep. The feeling of weakness, yeah. But at the same time, that feeling allowed me to see that I was actually connected at the same time. So weak is the opposite, opposite of power, isn't it? So let's say I feel powerless. But what are you feeling powerless about, Nora? I can't remember what it was at the time. I was just remembering, and just concentrating to what you were saying. And um, one of the feelings was uh, not powerless, but I said weak. Yeah, yeah. Yep, weak. Weak. Yep. Um, I suggest to everyone who feels powerless or weak or controlled or whatever, uh, any of those emotions related to that, that actually all of those emotions are what I would call furphy emotions or emotions of self-deception and underneath them is the real emotion and the real emotion usually if we're, if we're talking about powerlessness or weakness the real emotion is how much we were controlled through our entire life and we don't want to feel the pain of that so what we do when we don't want to feel the pain of one emotion we create another one so we don't have to feel the real emotion. Many of you are doing this, and this is something I'd like to talk about in humility. Many of you are doing this, creating an alternative emotion and being totally absorbed in that alternative emotion rather than feeling the actual one. So for yourself, Nora, your mother controlled you all of your life. This is why you feel powerless and weak. What you do is instead of allowing yourself to feel mummy's control of you and how unpleasant it felt, you would prefer to feel powerless and weak instead rather than feel the pain 
of being controlled by another person all your life. And this is what we do with many emotions. We substitute more acceptable emotions so that we do not have to feel the real pain and hurt underneath. Now later I want to talk more about that subject because I'll list some emotions that we're doing that with. And one of them is this emotion of feeling powerless or weak. Another one is feeling unheard, feeling unwanted. They are all emotions often that have very strong feelings underneath them that we need to allow ourselves to see. If we go across to Tim, then across to Joy. Thanks, Andrew. Um, one that came up for me is witnessing um, someone being in trouble for doing something and the parent being angry at them about it, demanding the truth, so they're already receiving anger. And then um, they say that they won't be punished if they just tell the truth. Nothing will, be, nothing will happen. And then they tell the truth, and then the truth just confronts them so much that they get angry and smack them. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yep. So in other words, we've been lied to so much about the allowance of truth in our lives. In our entire lives, it, we often get punished for the truth. When we tell a lie then we get away with it. You notice that? Particularly we learn this as a child. You know, the child, parent comes up, did you do that? Did you do that? And already you can feel the violence <laughs> in the question, right? And so you're already shaking your words. No. <laughs> Seems to be the right answer at the time, right? <laughs> Even though, yes, I did do it. No feels to be right. Because you're so worried about the potential violence associated with either telling or receiving truth. So this is another reason why we're resisted truth, is because in the past, the truth was often so associated with violence. Does that make sense? Now Joy was next and then Mary down the front here. Um, yeah, similar to Tim, I know I had a fear of um, getting into trouble because I've done something wrong. And I also had a fear that I, because I'd get ridicule, ridiculed if I did something right. Yep. So either way. Ridiculed if you get do something right because it wasn't right enough? Is that, or, or just because... I've had lots of situations in my life where I've done something outstanding in my passions and desires and been ridiculed. And ridiculed for the passion or desire. Yeah. Ridiculed for the emotion yeah. associated with what you did. Yep. yep. Mary? I, I feel like there's two reasons why I resist God's truth. One is because I of this issue with humility that I have, the feeling that I'm all love will be withdrawn from me if I feel my true feelings and yeah. so when truth comes to me it's it triggers my feelings and because I feel like I can't uh, you know I'm I'm afraid of the punishment of feeling mm -hmm. I resist the truth mm -hmm. and that's also um, prevents truth entering me emotionally but the second thing is that in my family there's almost a uh, prejudice against truth yep. there is no one truth there are many sides to stories and if you know a truth you are arrogant and you're dogmatic. So and let's call that a confusion with truth. There's actually a huge grief in me that I feel like truth has been a dirty word all yeah. my life. Yeah. And I've felt so lost around truth that now there's all these blocks to just allowing myself to receive truth. Yeah. So when a person states, for example, what Mary's saying, when a person states in her family that this is the truth, the family says, no, that's not possible because everyone has their own truth. There's truth in everything. And there's, you two know, sides there's to every two story. sides to every story. And I put to you that there's not two sides to every story, actually. There's actually three sides to every story. But anyway, that's a different <laughs> discussion. And um, this is all surrounding issues of truth, right? So we have all this fear and confusion associated with truth. Confusion in the sense that emotionally I'm not allowed to even consider that something could be the absolute truth because of the family environment or the different other emotions that I've grown up with. Because that is immediately con condemned as a concept. Does that make sense? Yeah. And for many of us that, is been, that has been the case. By the way, the three sides of truth are... 
God's mine and his. It's interesting you said his. No, oh, theirs. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, God's mine and theirs. And mine can be God's, can't it? Or yours could be God's. We, we have the ability for a, it, one of us to be in harmony or in line with God's truth. So then there'd be two sides to truth. Truth and the error. And, uh, but unfortunately for many of us, both of what is presented is often in error. And God's truth is often somewhere, somewhere else, indetermined by both individuals, uh, unable to be accepted by both individuals. Yep. Who was next? Uh, there was no next? I don't think there was any next. Oh, no, down here, and then over there. Hi. Um, when you're talking about these furfy emotions where we would rather feel weak than the true emotion, does that stand true for physical illnesses? Like I would rather have chronic fatigue than face a depression or... Yes, the control yeah. definitely. Oh, this is something I wanted to present in this aspect of truth. If we are truly understanding the way, we understand that every physical ailment pain or disease or sickness inside of our body is the direct creation of our own denial of truth. Every single one. So if you've got a little tiny twinge in your back, direct denial of something. If you've got a larger, sort of more chronic ailment like you know chronic fatigue or something that doctors don't necessarily recognize but or others that doctors do like cancers or, or disease heart disease and so forth they are all indications that we are in complete denial of a truth and if we're on the way on the way we're not focused on curing effects we are focused on examining and finding the cause of the denial inside of ourselves that creates.